Wow, they weren't kidding about it being a storm. Whew. I think I just hit a tiny lull. I've got a leak in my attic already. Uh, I've got a 24 it's got a lot of water stuck in it. Oh my lord, look at my yard. It's not pretty. Not pretty at all. I don't see anything on my roof, but I got water coming in through a roof vent. I don't understand what's going on. The ridge roof vent. They're 100 foot tall trees. Bending over like matchsticks. I don't know how much longer we're going to be out here. Uh, this is not a waterproof GoPro by a long shot. Holy cow, the, the ground's like friggin' quicksand over here. Got ourselves a big tree branch down here. Uh, one of my favorite trees over here. It just seems to have taken some damage. Open these guys, hold on. We have nothing but sandy soil down here. And there's enough water sitting in front of the race boat right now. Uh, <laughs> so I probably could just flip it off the trailer and drive it around in the yard. Oh boy. Clean up to do later on. Hopefully this thing passes. It's supposed to be gone by this afternoon. We'll see. We may have to fire up the generator here soon because we don't have the power. That doesn't look like I'll be using this boat ramp today. The sea is angry today, my friends. Holy cow. I don't know if you all going to be able to hear me, but holy shnikey. This is what I've rescued off the front of the bulkhead already. Got a half tank of gas, got a stopper, a couple kayak paddles. I'm gonna just throw them up here by the road. Maybe somebody around here owns them or uh, maybe somebody can just use them either way. Well, it don't sound like we're gonna get much done today. Let's take a peek at this that I did earlier. Hello, hello. Uh, the first project of the season. I've taken my dash pad out of the 19 here. Uh, I think it's time to bring it up to the 2000s. And I've always had an issue with the compass anyway because there's actual speakers underneath of there. And they're pretty much, it's been locked about where it's been the whole time I've had it anyway. So it's pretty useless. It's gonna be a little tricky to fix the hole. Hopefully I don't have to take the windshield out. That's a nightmare and may cause more problems than it's worth. Time to go to work. Hey, the hell. duck hierarchy okay I've gone ahead and got my compass pulled now it's time to go see if I still have the disc that I cut out sometimes it's good to be a bit of a pack rat when it comes to these old boats because that's the original piece that was cut out and I'm just gonna put it back in it's getting a little late right now and uh, cooling off a bit so my glass is not setting up nearly as fast but I did get my heavy coats in, which means that I can sit overnight and we'll be all set for tomorrow. And we also got the underside all cleaned up and patched up. Again, I'm going to let that set up overnight and I'll probably put another layer on it tomorrow. Alright, here we are five days later due to weather, whether I wanted to do it or not. No, actually it was like 60 degrees and below. And I don't like fiberglassing in that kind of weather. It just, it's more hassle than it's worth. I've gone ahead and got it all sanded up. Then I went ahead with some cabosil over top of it just to make sure everything was, you know, as flat as possible. Even though it was real close. And now I'm going to go ahead and start with the body putty. I would say Bondo, but I don't use Bondo anymore. Been using this Evercoat Rage Ultra for a long time and been having really good luck with it, so that's about the only recommendation I can give you. 
All right, well, we got far enough to uh, do a little primer here. I'm going to do a couple coats of that and let it set overnight. And then uh, maybe tomorrow a little wet sanding and uh, some white paint. All right, another couple days have gone by thanks to our beautiful weather and 60 degrees and below. Beautiful spring we're having here. I've gone ahead and I've wet sanded out my primer. Of course, I had 48 hours to dry, so it was plenty of dry by the time I got to it. And now I'm getting ready to do a little painting. Look at that screen. Not the easiest way to paint something, but it is the dashboard, so no big deal. And somehow I got paint on the camera, but let's do a third coat here. All right, we're on our third coat here. This time it's half of a clear coat inside this single stage mixed up together. That way the clear coat will give me a little bit of something I can sand on. And then I'm going to follow it up on the edges with a little melt away. That way it doesn't have so much sanding to do around the edges. All right, that should be good enough. And like I said, it is a dashboard and the boat's been painted about eight or 10 years ago. So it's been uh, faded out and all that good stuff. And it should work until I'm ready to pull the windshield and maybe even the deck off. I figure I got at least one more rebuild in my lifetime, maybe two. I'm just happy to be here to do it, to be honest. Rock and roll. While I'm sitting here waiting for my freshly sprayed paint to set up, I'm going to go ahead and mix up some paint for the interior, which is not nearly as complicated. As you can see, it's only some Rust-Oleum Gloss White, and I use my scale down here to kind of give it a 5 to 1 ratio with some Gloss Almond. That just takes that Gloss White off of it. You know, I mean, fiberglass is not Gloss White unless it's like, you know, gel coat. The insides of boats are not. And the real key of all of this is, is this Valspar enamel hardener. That basically turns an oil-based paint to almost a single stage kind of paint. It does literally harden this oil-based paint. And then it stays very durable. It doesn't, it doesn't get, stay tacky. It dries like I mean, this little patchwork I'm going to be doing here. I figure in 20 minutes it'd be good enough to walk on. But since it's under the deck, we won't be walking there. So, but I got to let it off gas for about another 20 minutes before you actually use it. In that time, I sure could use too. Man, I've got this huge mess. <laughs> The thing about this Valspar is, it's absolutely a must that you use some sort of respirator if you decide to spray this, because if the little droplets get in your lungs, it'll kill you. Just a cautionary tale. Didn't turn out so bad. Of course, you would never be able to tell on camera with white on white, but... They get a little dust or something and a little bit of the clear coat out here, but that'll wet sand right off. I need to bust it down a little bit anyway to make it look like the rest of it because it looks a little too new in reality, but it is under bright sunshine also. So we don't know how it's going to look in different shading, so we'll see what happens as the sun goes down. And I can't wet sand it now anyway. I'd have to at least give it till tomorrow to play with it. And while I'm waiting, I still got a couple more coats to do down below. So. All right, we just got done with doing our third coat on the inside of the deck here. I most definitely need to get out the mold killer. It's definitely been a winter that was pro mold. But yeah, I just need to spray some of that around. But real issue really is, is uh, to get this painted back up the color it's supposed to be. And it matches real well. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to call it a night because it's already getting semi-dark and I'm not going to be able to do anything on the top side until it actually sits for 24 hours at least. Okay, it's another day and a lot has been done. We've already gone ahead and wet sanded with our 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000. Then we compounded and then we waxed and we just got to take the wax off at the moment. And then we can put the dash pad back on and that should be good enough for now. And now it's time for the star of the show, my Garmin 640 GPS. Man, I love this thing. 
trying to get it positioned right at the moment. I want it to be centered on a steering wheel. Normally it will be sitting up a little bit so you can actually see the whole screen. But when it gets snotty out, I noticed already before, it tends to want to bang, bang. Because it, you know, this boat, you sit further up towards the bow, so when you take a hit, it bams. It tended to want to do this, bounce around a lot. So when it gets real snotty, I want to be able to lay it down to where it will be sitting on, actually on the dash pad. So I mean, it doesn't have to sit much, just to stable the bang, 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 kind of around. So I've gone ahead and I've got that in place. And I would have left the compass early just as a backup or something, just for the cool factor. But one, it didn't work, and that was a problem. Two, it had developed a leak over the winter. It actually got an air pocket in the top of it, so that meant it had to be fixed. And then three, it meant my Garmin had to sit off on the side, and that was uncool. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get this finally screwed down where it is, where the base is, and then I'll just be able to take my GPS unit out and leave my little tab down there. I think I got a winner here. I can have it up high for navigation, and when I'm banging along, I can just give this little twist and drop it down. It sits right on the cushion, lock it back down, and it's not going anywhere. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, those mounts shouldn't break. Yeah, well, they do, and they're $38, $48 a piece. Yeah, I can save one. I think I'll try to. But with that, I think project one is done, and it's getting dark, so I think I'm done also. Damn, I don't think I'm going this way. If I get trapped going the other way, I'm gonna have to cut across some people's yards. Woo! Yeah, that's a mess. That's a real mess. This house always had a problem with water. The county came out here about five or six years ago and uh, fixed it. <laughs> It looks like I'm going to be out with a chainsaw later on, that's for sure. Oh, man. Log in A to B. It may be loud, but the lights are on. Man, that generator's a lifesaver, but man, is it loud. Ah, hello, little squirrel. You don't seem too happy. We know there's those automatic generator systems, but ours is not necessarily needed that very often. And on top of that, uh, they run about six or seven thousand dollars. My whole system's four hundred dollars, but that included a sub panel that I put in the garage. So I don't know, but I got a lot of cleaning up to do. With the generator humming in the background, we got pretty much everything cleaned up. Uh, the woods are a wreck, of course. We try to keep everything on site that, that I can. I mean, big branches are big branches. We try to chop them up and use them for, I don't know, landscaping or whatever we have to. But the rest of it just gets kind of pulled apart, ripped up, thrown the woods in there. And in a couple days, four or five, hopefully a week or so, I'll uh, take the lawnmower and just run them over and grind them all off. Oh, the woods are a bit of a mess. Oh, beachy and e just who we want to see. Yes, big, bright, shiny new BG&E trucks. Maybe we can actually get some power going. Oh boy, that's such a nice sound to hear. After all that work, I just got another nine hours back. Funny story, while I let it cool off here before I put the top on and such, I actually put this system in after we lost power for like, I don't know, it was like 36 hours during the winter time. It happened to be like years before I actually used it. And then the first time I ended up using it for real, besides just the test and then, you know, maintenance on the actual generator, it lasted all of about, I don't know, we sat it out for about three hours and then finally I was like, okay, it's time to just plug in the generator. And I plugged it in and like 45 minutes later, bam, the power was back on. And I've had a few incidences like that, but the last couple have been a little bit more uh, drastic. This time around, uh, we lost power for about 14 hours. Uh, I used it for about nine. Not so bad. And uh, everything functioned in the house. As I said, we have a well 
so it doesn't work without that actual power going to it and it's not really there for you know like comforts like air conditioning and you know running the electric stove while running the air conditioner and the well and the hot water heater all at the same time the main reason i did all this is because of that winter time incident uh the house actually got down to the, like the high 30s and it was a nightmare i mean i had the generator and i had a few power cords and i'm running them all through out this door here and then it was like i said it was cold as all get out so i had the door closed and then i'd run the power cords all the way over to here and then i'd have a big quilt stuffed in the door because you know the, the cords got to go through the door and it was just i was so unprepared so i put that whole system in and then like i said i never used it for years <laughs> but it's made life good now bg and e came through for us and uh the power's back on I have to just cut that. Cut it, 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 cut it. And we'll cut to this, and then we'll say. Maybe I need to mow my lawn, too. Okay, that was weird. Lucky I don't have my camera on. They'd be thinking I was doing child abuse. Huh, I wonder if the mic can hear me. Right. Da, 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 da. I said I gotta let it flash over for a few minutes, and then I'll be back. All right, now we're doing this. We already went ahead and wet, went ahead. That's a weird way, no, nah. We already did. The, what is it like dinner time at the corral the other three over there still have winter splattered all over them i think i got a winner here i can have it up when i 